I'm here at the Harley Davidson showroom to talk about the Harley Davidson 107 2020 Fat Boy, as you can see over here. Basically, the Fat Boy has a long legacy and it's the most iconic bike there is. Now, of course, it was first introduced in the year 1990, but didn't become famous till about uh, 1991 and the reason for that is because of Arnold Schwarzenegger and of course James Cameron and they produced the blockbuster hit Terminator 2 Judgment Day and of course you can see Arnold Schwarzenegger riding on the 1991 Fat Ball. <laughs> Hello everyone, my name is Fletch and I'm here to do a review at the Harley Davidson showroom of the 2020 Fat Boy 107. So let me try walk you through the 2020 Fat Boy. Uh, there are two versions, of course. Uh, this particular version is the 107 model, and what makes it very distinctive, of course, is the large inverted forks, right? And they've added uh, a nacelle to it, and great fat tires, and the iconic uh, rim, in which is basically here a full encompass rim. Uh, it obviously comes with uh, foot pegs, uh, in this case we've added uh, crash bars, um, and as you can see this is a 107, uh, two into two exhaust, pillion pegs, uh, it comes with uh, of course the pillion seats, and this is the 18 litre tank, and of course the 18 litre tank gives you roughly about uh, 350, 360 kilometres uh, for the total distance. Now, looking at the controls, uh, on the left-hand side, standard Harley controls, you've got high beam, low beam, uh, left indicator. This particular button here is uh, to toggle through the trip meters and the odometers and so forth. And then, of course, this is the horn. On the right-hand side, of course, you have the emergency lights on the top. This, of course, is your start button and your power on and off button over here. And Last but not least, the right indicator. Okay, so that's going to be my quick overview of uh, the Fat Boy. And what I'm going to do now is going to get on the bike uh, and do a little test ride. But don't just listen to me. I'm going to hand you over to my fellow YouTuber, What's Up Bob, and let him tell you all about his 88 CI Fat Boy. Hey, Fletch, What's Up Bob here? So here's my impressions on fat boys in general and specifically on this 2002 model that I've got. 
I was first drawn to it just because of the looks, the old retro kind of look to it. I mean, it looks a lot like the 49 FL panhead models. It's got some of that going for it. The big headlamp, the big huge front forks, this Art Deco front cover, uh, the nostalgia uh, the engine guard on it, flared rear uh, fender. It's got all those cool things. It has also got the rigid look going. But let me tell you, this does not ride like a rigid. On the soft tails, of course, they hid the, the shocks underneath. So when you get this thing out on the road and ride, it, it still gives you a very good ride. Big, heavy cruiser, likes to go 75 miles an hour, likes to ride, you know, 350, 400 miles a day. It can do that every day in and out. It's, it's just a very, very comfortable bike. Uh, one thing that is different on this from the, uh, the old school looking 49 are these solid rim wheels which there's the big myth out there that wind cannot pass through there. So if you're in a crosswind, you're going to get buffeted around. I can tell you, I can't tell any difference from this bike, from riding my V-Rod, which have the hard spoked mag type wheels on it. Uh, so that again, is just a total myth. This bike just loves to get up and go on the highway, even though it has just the old 88 in it. So hope that was of uh, some information to you guys and we'll see you all soon. Anyway, I'm on the bike right now. Uh, this obviously is not the 114, but the 107 Fat Boy. And I'll be taking it on a quick test ride. Uh, I can't do uh, a longer distance of the route that I used to do, but I'm gonna try and do uh, and cover and do justice to this bike as much as possible. So let me take it out on the road and start this guy up. So to keep this uh, a little bit more organized, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover four items. Um, the first one being power, comfort, handling, and of course, touring, right? So then at least uh, we have a good coverage on it uh, for to be able to understand a little bit more about this bike. So this is a 107, so this translates to about a 1,750 cc's. And this being a 600 plus pound bike, uh, or uh, 300 kgs, would mean that uh, there's a lot of power to weight ratio. It will mean that there's a, more than enough power to push a fairly light bike. I mean, this is not as heavy as a touring bike but uh, it would definitely do well on its own. I'll put the specifications of the bike just over here uh, to let you know the weight and, and, and displacement and everything else. But in terms of power, looking at this particular bike, it has more than enough to spare, uh, obviously. Um, when, when, you, when you consider the fact that it's 1,750 cc, most of the, the coupes and, and, and the regular street cars are between 1.8 to 2 liters. So that would mean, and they're obviously a ton, this only is 300 uh, kg. You're going to have a lot of power, a lot of response on the throttle, and I realize that this bike is tuned in a large curve in a sense that it has good torque at a lower end, good mid-range, and pretty good uh, at the high rev level as well. Uh, but again, you cannot compare it to a, sp uh, a, a sports bike or anything like that. It will still be able to comfortably go. And of course, just like most bikes, uh, this has, or Harley Davidson's bikes uh, on the big twins, uh, that you would have a six gear. The six gear is basically lowering the RPM, so you have a more comfortable ride uh, in a sense. So in terms of power, it's there. In terms of uh, agility, you know, this is not a very wide bike. Um, the handlebars are set up uh, well enough that you have a, a good stance uh, as opposed to a mini ape or, or a beach bar. Uh, those are the sort of those are the sort of uh, handlebars that you would be it will be hard you'll be hard pressed to take corners and and u-turns and like a u-turn i'm going to take now uh, for instance right? 
Now in terms of comfort, the riding triangle for this particular bike yeah, is pretty good. Uh, it's four controls on floorboards uh, and I, to give you a little perspective, I'm six feet, maybe a little bit over six feet with my boots on. That would make me an average, average height, right? And in a bike like this, uh, and I hope to show you as I take the corner, uh, that you will be able to see that based on the riding triangle, that my knees are not above the tank. Now, if I'm a taller person and knees above the tank, that will be very uncomfortable in the long run. But in this case, I'm not. I realize that the seat is just a little hard and probably decide that to, if I was to get a bike like this or get the fat boy, I'll probably go for the sundowner seat. And I can attest to that because I have the sundowner seat for my diner and it's wonderful. I've done thousands of miles on it with no issue. Plus the, the, the added portion of it would be that it raises me by about two inches and back by one inch. So then I have a nice stretch. I don't have to put highway bars on, on, the, uh, on this particular bike if I wanted to. I can leave the crash bars as it is without putting highway pegs. That my stretch will be comfortable enough. Right, and of course the additional comfort of the floorboards. A lot of people may not like it. I personally think it's very comfortable uh, to ride long distances, you know, to be able to like, you're sitting on a couch and your feet flat on the floor and you're watching Netflix, <laughs> right? Uh, but yeah, so uh, the handlebars are not too far down, not too far forward, not too low. Uh, it provides uh, enough comfort for me to stretch out uh, and lean back. I'm literally just leaning back and, and be able to just relax on this particular ride. Of course, I could change my posture if where, where I feel I need to. And you can, with these bars at a right height, to have uh, an aggressive stance as well if you need to take harder corners and so forth. Not that I would suggest, you know, this is a cruiser. You can. Uh, but, you know, you should enjoy the ride. Right? So, in terms of comfort, thing to note is the seat. Uh, and and to make sure that your knees, which is the best, the knees are the best indicator for you to tell you whether you're going to be uncomfortable in the long run or not. If your knees are above the tank, then uh, it's going to be a problem. Talking about um, handling, um, right now, once the, once this uh, lights turn green, I'm going to do a U-turn, and I should be able to have a good feel again and, and tell you for sure how this bike handles uh, unlike others. Okay, it took that a little bit wide, but I was I was looking at the guy because I was a bit worried that he was going to cut off. So let's take a look at the power again. Let's push this through. Okay. Uh, the bad thing about that will be that my camera gets pushed forward. Uh -uh. So I'm going to take it down another stretch so that you can see the kind of power, but it's it's nice uh, the kind of power that you can get from uh, this bike. But as you can see, if you look here, my knees are just aligned with the tank. It's not too comfortable, but I will probably suggest to change, if you're my height, to change the seat to something that is uh, a little bit higher or lifts you higher so that you then your knees that will then have a stretch and then it will be uh, a better so-called triangle uh, that you have a more 90 degree uh, on that particular uh, seating position one thing to take note big fat tire when you do uh, corners be careful the angle of attack because uh, at the end of the day, there is slippage, just as with the breakout, and just as with uh, those bikes with larger tires. But again, once you got used to the bike and you know how it handles, 
you obviously know the, the angle of attack and know the best position to be in when when making when making a turn sorry I was trying to avoid this uh, taxi driver okay I'm gonna attack a U-turn again just to show you uh, what's what it's like uh, probably at the next round because uh, at the end of the day it's traffic lights so let's sum everything up power when you look at the power to weight ratio 1800 cc's against uh, 300 kg's you definitely have a lot of power to go uh, in terms of pickup uh, it in the low range it has good enough torque for you to take off at the traffic light or anywhere at a stop and go situation you will have more than enough power to go uh, I, I feel that it has a, a good nice curve in terms of power you have good torque in the lower end you've got a good mid-range uh, maybe a little bit weaker on the fifth gear but you know uh, at the end of the day I, I, I think uh, at the higher gears you're at higher speeds I, I don't think you know this is not a race bike so I don't think you're going to be hammering uh, putting pedals on the metal so to speak <laughs> right so uh, it's more than enough power in terms of comfort again nice rider triangle not too low bars floorboards instead of foot bags uh, so you get a nice comfortable foothold <laughs> uh, and of course uh, you have a good stretch thanks to uh, I'm gonna do this U-turn you have a good stretch so that you'll be able to handle just about everything touring no issue you can put on bags and windshields uh, if you want to and then of course the 18 liter tank can take you very far uh, handling very nimble bike real joy to ride anyway folks I'm heading back to uh, the Harley Davidson dealership and if you haven't yet please do hit the like button and again if you haven't yet uh, please do hit the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the notification bell to let you know when's the next video that's out thank you very much folks for watching you have safe rides